continuing with group 7, group 17 chemistry, the halogens, we're now going to consider their ability to act as reducing agents. And underpinning this, remember, is the fact that by definition, if something acts as a reducing agent, it must be oxidised in the process. So I'm going to write that. The halogen is oxidised, which, remember, means that it loses electrons. So bear that in mind the whole time because it will help you understand what's going on when we look at the huge number of equations. So starting with the board statement that the reducing ability, so their ability to act as reducing agents of the halide ions increases down the group. So if we consider the elements, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, by definition, astatine is the strongest reducing agent. Whereas fluorine is the weakest. But what is our explanation for that? Well, as you descend the group, remember the atoms get bigger, so the number of shells of electrons increases. This means that the ionic radius increases. The amount of shielding of those outer electrons, those valence electrons increases. The electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and valence electron weakens. And then the all important point, which is that the valence electron is more easily lost and that takes us back to our original definition of oxidation which is all about losing electrons so the halide ion is more easily oxidized the halide ion acts as a stronger reducing agent. So if you're asked in the exam to explain why the reducing ability of the halide ions increases down the group, you need to be talking about the number of shells of electrons increasing, meaning the amount of shielding increases, so the attraction between the nucleus and the valence electrons weakens, that valence electron is more easily lost, the halide ion is more easily oxidised, the halide ion acts as a stronger reducing agent. And now let's talk about observations. So how do we observe or how can we see that the reducing ability of the halide ions increases down the group? Well, we react those solid sodium halides with concentrated sulfuric acid. Bear in mind that we can prove that the halide ions reducing power increases if we look at the various equations involved and we consider sulfur's oxidation number. Because the greater that decrease in oxidation number of sulfur, the greater the halide's reducing power. Let's take these various halide ions in turn then. So we're going to descend the group starting with sodium chloride, so the chloride ion. Remember, we're expecting as we descend that group that this chloride ion will be a weaker reducing agent. 
compared with the halogens, which are lower down in the group. And we're going to prove that now. So the sodium chloride reacts with that concentrated sulfuric acid. And you will need to learn these equations. In terms of observations, we will see steamy fumes of HCl produced. In red, I'm going to put the oxidation numbers. So hydrogen is plus one. Oxygen is minus two, which means that sulfur here is plus six. What about on the right hand side? Sulfur is again plus six. So I'll highlight that to show that there's no change in oxidation state, indicating that the chloride ions are very weak reducing agents. Um, just as an aside, by the way, we can infer that this is not a redox reaction. And it's actually because that oxidation number of sulfur hasn't changed, so we can't say that oxidation reduction have both taken place here. So we've dealt with sodium chloride. Moving down a halide ion, we're going to take on sodium bromide. Here, two reactions take place. Here's the second reaction as an ionic equation. And now let's look at the combined full equation for that second reaction. I'm going to label various oxidation states. So in this equation up here, in that first equation, look, that sulfur hasn't changed its oxidation state. So again, it's not a redox reaction. But if we look down here, I'm just gonna grab my highlighter. We can see that sulfur has gone from plus six over here to plus four over here, which means that reduction's taken place. The bromine's gone from minus one over here to zero here, so that means oxidation has taken place, and therefore we can say that this is a redox reaction. Really spelling this out. So that is oxidation, this is reduction. In terms of observations that take place, we produce Br2, so we will see a brown liquid. Now we're considering the iodide halide ion in the form of sodium iodide. Well, we have multiple reactions taking place here. So that sulfur hasn't changed oxidation state. There's no redox reaction in this first reaction. Reaction two now. So there's reduction taking place because we've gone from plus six on sulfur to plus four. Looking at iodine, we've gone from minus one to zero. So that's oxidation. So this is a redox reaction. Our observation here is a choking gas, which is sulfur dioxide. Reaction three. There's sulfur being reduced again. There's iodine being oxidized. So that is a redox reaction. Our observation here is that sulfur produced is a yellow solid. I promise we're nearly there. What about equation four? So our sulfur has been reduced, its oxidation has fallen from plus six to minus two. The iodine has gone from minus one to zero. So that's oxidation, so another redox reaction. In terms of observations, we get a black solid, which is I2. We also get an eggy smell. 
from the stinky hydrogen sulfide gas. And just to bear this all in mind, remember this series of equations is showing to you that as you descend group seven, those halide ions become stronger reducing agents. Question one, which of these species is the best reducing agent? So two things to notice. First of all, we need a halide ion, not the halogen. And second of all, we want the element which appears lowest in group seven. So that will therefore be the iodide ion I minus. Which one of the following statements concerning halogen chemistry is true? Sodium chloride produces chlorine when treated with concentrated sulfuric acid. This is why I said it's so important that you learn these equations because that first equation I showed you did not have chlorine being produced. Sodium chloride produces chlorine when treated with bromine. This is all to do with halogen oxidizing ability. Do you remember when we looked at a previous video to do with halogen displacement? So more reactive halogen displaces a less reactive halogen. Bromine is less reactive than chlorine, so this is false. Sodium bromide produces bromine when treated with concentrated sulfuric acid. That's true. That was in the sodium bromide set of equations that I've just written about. Sodium bromide produces bromine when treated with iodine and aqueous potassium iodide. Again, that's false for the same reason that this one was false. So the answer here is C. Concentrated sulfuric acid can be reduced by some solid sodium halides to H2S. Give the oxidation state of sulfur in H2S. So remember, hydrogen ions are always plus one. The compound is always neutral, which means that the answer here is minus two. Give one solid sodium halide, which will reduce concentrated sulfuric acid, forming H2S. Remember, it's the elements that sit lower in that group, which have a stronger reducing power. So NaI is a good answer here. State one way in which the presence of hydrogen sulfide could be recognized. Remember, it's by its horrible smell of bad eggs. A different solid sodium halide reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid without reduction, forming a halogen-containing product X, suggests an identity for X. So you want a halogen which acts as a weaker reducing agent, so you need to look towards the top of the table. So the solid sodium halide will be something like sodium chloride or sodium fluoride. So in terms of what will that product be, it will be hydrogen chloride or hydrogen fluoride. Identify the solid sodium halide which produces X already answered that, NaCl. State the role of sulfuric acid in the formation X. It's acting as an H plus or proton donor. Write an equation for the reaction with concentrated sulfuric acid in which X is formed.